follow your first mind. Now, in some cases, this is really good advice. Because sometimes the first vibe that you get from somebody is the right one. If you feel like, hey, that person's not to be trusted or there's something off about them, you're, you're normally right. And if you're taking a multiple choice test, probably your first feeling, your first gut reaction to the question is right. But there are other times when people see posts on social media and they want to give advice and their advice comes off as flippant. And that's the first thing that comes to their mind. In that case, it's probably not right. In that case, you might want to realize that whatever flipping advice you want to give, it wouldn't be helpful. And it doesn't take into account many different scenarios. So I posted a, a video not too long ago, and it was about how Tucker Carlson had said that women without children were aging and unlikable and you know it was just kind of a problem that they weren't having kids and this kind of thing and the a woman stitched it and she said well the reason why these women aren't having kids is because a lot of times they see how much work it is for other women who have kids and are not getting help from their spouses. Now, two reactions that I thought were kind of inappropriate happened in the comments. Now, a lot of people were upset and annoyed and irritated by this thread of comments of men who were not helping their wives at all that were using weaponized incompetence feigned incompetence learned helplessness you know you're just using all these tactics to avoid being equal partners but the two comments that probably were somebody's first mind reaction but they really should have thought about a little bit more that I want to comment on because I, I did comment to these people these comments but I want to comment them in general because I'm sure these people are not they're not rare in their thought process the first comment was for someone to say well what did these men's mothers teach them they must have babied them they must have been single mothers now, this whole idea that men can blame their behavior on single mothers is misogynistic. When someone becomes an adult, and especially when that person decides that they're adult enough to get married and have kids... It is their responsibility to learn whatever skills they need to have to be effective as a spouse and as a parent. And whether they were given those skills through their own parents' upbringing, their own raising, or whether they get a book, or whether they get a therapist, or whether they take a parenting class, or they go to premarital counseling. It doesn't matter what method they use. But the point is an adult, especially one who's decided that they're going to get married and have kids, cannot blame their inability to do that effectively on their parents. You are an adult. You are responsible for your choices you are responsible for your actions and no body in a comment section should be blaming a single mom or any mom for that matter for what an adult is doing that adult is responsible and that is a double standard 
that exist a lot in America because nobody was blaming the fathers of those men and asking what did their fathers teach them. It was all the moms. So we need to stop with that. The other knee-jerk reaction that people had was... Well, the women need to choose better and there must have been a ton of red flags that they missed, that they overlooked. Now, that is a possibility, but that's not a guarantee that that happened in every case. You know, the wonderful thing about research is that a lot of things that we discuss are studied. And they're studied in longitudinal ways, meaning they're studied over time. You know, there have been research projects that have followed groups of people for 25 years. Whether those projects were about goal setting or parenting or the effects of certain drugs or even about relationships and relationship dynamics. And when you look at these longitudinal studies and you look at these studies where they have followed people for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, 50 years sometimes, you find that there weren't always red flags. You find that sometimes researchers wrote their descriptions of people and some of the relationships that they predicted would be the most successful turned out to be the most toxic. The researchers who were even trained to look for red flags, who were even trained to set a baseline for a person's aptitude at relationships, they got it wrong. Their predictions were off. And so you find out that some people are manipulative. They don't show their true colors in the very beginning. They tell you everything that you want to hear. And once they get you locked down into a relationship where they get you with a child and they feel like they have control of you, then their true self may come out. Also, another thing that researchers have found is that there are people who falsely understand themselves and think they can handle